Welcome to Poetry for Us All, provided by the Mississippi Poetry Society and narrated by Mary Beth McGee. What do you think of when you think of poetry? Do you think of something with harsh rules and boring themes? Or do you think of free expression and fun? I hope the latter is what comes to mind. From the times of earliest musicians and minstrels who used music and poetry to share news and teach history, human beings have created poetic forms. Across culture and languages, poetry has continued to grow and bloom. From nursery rhymes to school spirit songs, poetry fills our lives. Poetry brings ideas and situations to life in ways which can feel almost musical. Think of the lyrics to your favorite song. Chances are it could be read as a poem and work just as well. When thought, words, and rhythm come together, you're straying into poetry territory. Poetic forms evolve and grow. There are dozens of poetic forms and variations on those forms. For example, would it surprise you to know Shakespeare wasn't the first to write a sonnet and the form he used to write them wasn't the same as the form used by earlier poets? It's true. As well known as Shakespearean sonnets are, they aren't the only kind. The pattern for a sonnet isn't just one pattern. And sonnets aren't the only poetic forms we use. From short verses like haiku to long ones like the Viking sagas and other epic stories. Poems come in all sizes and shapes. A poem can be as simple as two words. The Problem with My Bicycle by Mary Beth McGee Broke, spoke. Yep, that's a poem. Short, sweet, to the point, but a poem. It can be as complicated as the dramatic story of The Wreck of the Hesperus by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which tells the sad story of an arrogant sea captain, his pretty little daughter, and the reef of Norman's Woe. It can tell stories of love or hate, it can tell of winning or losing. It can be stories of history. It can be predictions of the future. Poetry can be all of those things and more. It can tell about sports, like the humorous Casey at the Bat. It can tell of nature, like Trees by Joyce Kilmer. Or the tiger, often called Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Some forms create shapes with their lines. Some follow certain rhyme patterns. Some have distinct rules for the number of words or syllables. Each of them offers something different, both to the poet and to the reader. A few of my favorites include the Fibonacci, based on Fibonacci's numbers. The Kelly Loon, an Americanized version of Japanese haiku. The Trimeric, a poem written in groups of three. The Diamante, a verse which leaves the end shape of a diamond on the page. The Golden Shovel, which takes the words of someone else and uses them as the ending of each line of a new poem. These are just a few of the poetry forms out there. It barely scratches the surface. You can have great fun with poetry. The best poems touch our emotions. Some make us laugh, like Ogden Nash's nonsense verses. Some inspire us, like Rudyard Kipling's If. Some speak to our fears and dreads, like Edgar Allan Poe and The Raven or Annabelle Lee. All of them let us peek into the lives of others and share their thoughts. Here's my challenge to you. 
Find a subject which interests you. Then look for poems about that subject and notice the forms most commonly used. Pick one of the forms and read samples of other poems in that form by several poets. See how they adapt the form to their own style and needs. Then write a poem of your own in that form. Use whatever topic you would like. Let the world of poetry become a part of your life. Thank you for joining us. Remember, poetry is for us all. We hope you'll join the party.